Good morning, Vineyard family. I'm blessed to be able to dive into the Word with you guys this morning. So today we're going to be going through Colossians 3, 1 through 17, uh, which is titled, Living as Those Made Alive in Christ. In the previous chapter, uh, Paul assures the Colossians that they have been raised to new life in Christ. And uh, so to set up the stage a little bit, um, I'm going to read Colossians 2, 12 through 13. That says, Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you, or us, alive with Christ. He forgave us of all of our sins. He now, in chapter 3, presents the implications of that life um, in his teaching section. Uh, verses 1 through 4 are an introduction, and verses 5 through 11 are a contrast between the old and the new ways of living. Verses 12 through 17 are guidelines for the Christian community. So now that we have a overview of all of this, let's go into each section and talk about what each of them mean. So Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Now, I'm going to stop there um, and say that when Paul refers to things above, he's echoing Jesus' instructions to in Matthew um, 6.33 to seek first the kingdom of heaven. Paul also says in Romans 8, 6, that where we choose to set our minds makes the difference between life and death. This reminds me of a lesson that my softball coach at APU would always teach us. Um, she would always say that whatever you focus on will increase. If you focus on the bad, it seems like everything's bad, but when you focus on the good, when you focus on God, you see him in everything. And when you focus on God's kingdom, uh, you see it here on earth and you're able to participate in it. So let's continue to verses three and four. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. I'd like to point out that Christ is our life. He doesn't use a simile, uh, Paul, and say Christ is like our life. No, he says Christ is life. He is the center around which life should be oriented. So now to the uh, second section, verses 5 through 11, that say, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed which is idolatry. And I'm going to stop right there and say, um, I think that uh, we, when we see things that are so prominent and um, accepted in society, uh, we can become almost numb to them and it seems like it's not that big of a deal. But Paul straight up calls these things out for what they really are, idols. And any earthly object, behavior, people, or even an identity can become an idol. Um, so, uh, I personally struggled with, um, this for a majority of my life. Uh, I allowed my identity to be shaped by people's opinions of me and by worldly standards. Uh, I let the people around me tell me who I was, uh, who they thought I was more than I let God tell me who he created me to be. Um, when I came to the end of myself, finally, uh, I finally let God uh, have all of me, my identity, and everything else in my life. Um, and by submitting my idols to God, uh, His Spirit enabled me to put them to death. And since then, God has truly transformed my heart, and um, I've been able to experience freedom in, uh, in a way like no other. But it isn't just a, uh, a one-time decision and everything since then is nice and easy. Um, 
after, um, well, as long as we're living on this earth in our fleshly bodies that are continually decaying, uh, we will still have to answer to our uh, sinful desires. But the only way that we can overcome sin is by walking in the Spirit. Uh, Paul says in Romans 8, 13, and again in Galatians 5, 16, that if we live by the Spirit, we will put to death and overcome the deeds of the body. So let's continue to verses uh, 6 through 11. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Again, Paul is emphasizing what it looks like to be a new creation in Christ. He calls us in Romans 12 too, to not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our minds. This renewal of our minds is what drives our daily obedience to God and what sets us apart from this world. I believe uh, that this last verse also has to do with our new selves in Christ. When we live by the Spirit, He enables us to treat others the way uh, that Christ treated others on earth, um, because He is our example. So there's a difference between um, acceptance and approval. Uh, we're not called to approve of everyone's life decisions, but we are called to accept and love our neighbors as ourselves. That is what Jesus did. It wasn't through the judgment of the Pharisees that sinners were changed, um, but it was through the love, compassion, and kindness that Jesus Christ extended towards them. So uh, when we stop seeing um, each other at, uh, based off of our political beliefs, our sexual orientation, our social status, or the sins that we have committed, then we can learn to extend the love and the grace that Christ has shown us. We don't have to approve or agree with someone's life decisions to see them as a child of God. And uh, that's what sets believers apart from the world. So continuing to the last section, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against one, uh, someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now, this passage teaches us what it looks like to live as new creations in Christ. When we wear clothes, that is usually the first thing that people notice about us, and the first thing they see when they look at us, and our, what we wear tends to reflect um, our style, whether it's sporty or business or casual or whatever it may be. And so when Paul says to clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, etc., uh, I think he's saying that, um, that these things are, should be what people first notice about us um, and uh, when they interact with us, when they see us, and that that is a reflection of God, our Father, to others. And over all these virtues, uh, we are, of course, to put on love. Um, just how Christ is the center of our lives, love should be the center of our actions. In 1 Corinthians 16, 14, uh, that verse reinforces this, saying, let all that you do be done in love. And that is one of my favorite verses. Uh, continuing to the last few verses uh, in Colossians, 
Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I love that first verse, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. This passage begins with the condition of the heart and extends to the church body, meaning it all starts with who or what you let rule your heart. Someone that rules is someone who gives commands and controls action. So whether so whatever you let rule your heart is what will command your actions and your thoughts. So when Paul says to let the peace of Christ uh, rule in our hearts, he's implying that this peace should be what commands our inner thoughts and our actions. Us being members of one body under the rule of the one perfect peace results in a church that reflects our creator. So there's a lot from these 17 verses uh, to meditate and reflect on. And it's so life-giving. I hope you feel the same way. I pray that this devotional brought you perspective, encouragement, and hope this morning. So with that, I'm going to end in prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you so much for your word and for all the things that uh, you've taught us this morning and for the things that you will continue to put on our hearts for tomorrow and the day after that and the, the days of our lives, Lord. Um, I thank you that we are new creations and that you have provided the spirit to um, strengthen us, to uh, put to death the deeds of the body. And uh, thank you for the hope that you bring every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. song we can